Welcome to another video. If you recall the last video that I did that had sine to the k of x over sine to the k of x plus cosine to the k of x and it had this um, boundary from 0 to pi over 2, I skipped the option when k equals 1, which is this option with those boundaries. Now, I noticed that with the boundaries present, I could use that um, change of variable and um, apply the trick that I applied. But in this case, it is not a definite integral, so I cannot use that strategy. So I decided to just integrate this indefinite integral, and I really, really struggled. If you have an alternative strategy, let me know. But ultimately, I found this strategy that is the easiest ever in the world. Let's get into the video. Because of the special nature of this integral and considering the fact that it is just the ratio of sine to the sum of sine and cosine and the derivative of one is the other, even though the sine might become negative, there's this trick similar to that change of variable, which means we can generate another integral and then cause them to interact. Let me show you what I mean. Let's call this A. Okay, let's call that A. Let's create another integral that only replaces the sine with cosine. So, remember that this is what I'm trying to integrate. I am not trying to integrate this, but I'm going to use this as a tool to get this integral. So what do I do here? Just look at it. If I decide to add these two integrals, a plus b, I'll be adding this because you can do that for integrals. You can add the integrands. So what you have is going to be a plus b is going to be the integral of the sum of these two. But notice that they have the same denominator. So you just need to add the numerators, which is going to be sine x plus cosine x over sine x plus cosine x dx. Guess what? The integrand becomes one. So ultimately, a plus b is just the integral of dx because this disappears because you cancel out. So you got a plus b will be the integral of dx, and that's going to be x plus c. Well, this is the first step. I'm going to call this c1. <laughs> okay, now we've got the first integral. What about if we do a minus b? What's going to happen? Well, similarly, let's do it here. A minus B is going to be the difference between these two integrals. So you're going to have this minus this. So the only thing different is that this sign is going to change. So we have the integral of sine X minus cosine X over sine X plus cosine X. Okay, that's what we're going to have for A minus B. How would you integrate this? This is a lot easier because we can just do a U substitution here where u is sine x plus cosine x, and the derivative is going to have this minus somewhere. So let's say, let u be equal to sine x plus cosine x. We know that du is going to be cosine x minus sine x dx. But what we want is sine x minus cosine x. So we can factor out the minus here so that what we have is going to be negative sine x minus cosine x dx. Okay, or we can say negative du and then move this negative over to this side. So what I'm going to do now is replace the top with sine x minus cosine x dx, which is what I have already here. So I can say a 
minus b is equal to the integral of negative du over, which is this, right, over this, which is u. Oh, we have the answer to this. If you integrate, this negative comes out, your answer is going to be negative natural log of u plus c2. Let's call it plus c2. Okay, maybe I should come down this way so I can use that space. Equals negative ln of u plus c2. Okay, um, let's write the actual u because we're going to have a minus b will be equal to negative ln of what is u again? It's sine x plus cosine x. So we got sine x plus cosine x plus c2. We're almost done because now I have generated two equations that can be solved simultaneously. So I got a plus b equals this and I have a minus b equals this. Solving the simultaneous equation, um, if you add these two equations together, what, what are you going to have? Just look at it. Let's save some space. If we if we decide to add this equation to this equation, we're going to have, uh, okay, let me write it here. Let's write a plus b equals x plus c1. Okay, we just want to add them together. If I add these two together, what do I get? I get 2a equals this added to this, so I'm going to have x minus ln of the absolute value of sine x plus cosine x. And then I'm going to have c2 plus c1. Okay, let's go here. So now I can say that a will be equal to x over 2 minus half of ln of sine x plus cosine x plus c, which now be half of this if I divide by 2. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, I can just remove this 2 from here. I don't have space. <laughs> just do this. Over 2, everything over 2, and this over 2, which gives me my final answer to be x. I'm going to write it vertically minus the natural log of sine x plus cosine x. plus c. That's terrible presentation. I'm going to write the answer here. Okay, so we say that the integral. If you do this another way, and it's not as, and it's not as stressful as this, because I think this was quite easy. We didn't even need to do as much work as I would have done if I used Biester as substitution, or if I had done what I call rationalization of the integrand. Yeah, that was taking me a long time to come to the final answer. And even the answers I got when I evaluated from 0 to pi over 2, I did not get pi over 4 as it is expected in this case. Because in this case, with zero, from 0 to pi over 2, you're going to get 0 here, and you're going to get pi over 4 as your only answer. I hope this makes sense. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.